Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to tonight's night ending bonus. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get into today's upload, shall we? All right, everyone, today I have a subscriber who lives in the vicinity of West Virginia, Virginia, what I've been talking about for the last couple of months, and we've seen a lot of encounters coming out of. He's a tractor trailer driver out of there so he's on the road a lot and he sees a lot of crazy things well what he's going to share with us today is probably one of the most crazy things he's ever seen during his route mark how are you oh, i'm doing good how are you i'm doing great i appreciate you coming on and taking some time out of your day to share what you saw that fateful day oh um, you're welcome so right now i'm going to turn the platform over to you so you can kind of kind of paint the picture for us okay and you are set my friend all righty well i'm a truck driver and I, I drive the same route every day and i've done it for like six or seven years and it's 33 south or 32 south and you know, I've drove it for years. I've never seen anything other than regular animals and stuff like that. Well, this day, I was on my second load, coming back from where I haul the stuff to. I was coming down the road, and there's like a tree line, and then there's a big field, and then on the other side, there's a tree line. Well, I seen something coming through the field. Of course, first thing pops in your mind is deer. And I was going probably 55 miles an hour at that time until I seen it. And then I started slowing down. And the closer it got, the bigger it got. And then I thought, well, maybe it's a bear. Hmm. And then, but I had like 100 feet to go. And it had like a half a mile through the field to go. That's how fast this thing was. Now, and I got almost in, to the top. Real quick, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. That's all right. But that field is kind of at an angle uphill yeah it's uphill now is there any is the the grass or the weeds in the field how high is that for it to travel through yeah uh, it was probably two three feet tall so it's got like, some resistance as well yeah like a hay kind of like field okay okay <clears throat> but by the time i got like almost to the top of the hill it was already up there and it jumped off the bank right in front of my truck and I stopped and you know how the air does on a big truck that real loud air yep. didn't scare it a bit or nothing and I was so shocked I was like what in the hell is that it was standing in front of my truck probably 10 15 feet in front of my truck looking right at me mm -hmm. and my truck's probably the hood of my truck probably five feet up and its shoulders was right at the top of the truck, and its head was above. Wow. And it was looking straight in my window at me. That's, that's how tall it was on all fours. Yeah. And I you know, kept looking at it, and it, it looked like it was snarling at me. 
but my truck's real loud, so I couldn't really hear nothing. And it it just you could see all of its teeth, huge teeth. Its eyes, the white part was yellow, like a dull yellow, and the middle was black. So and, there was a pupil, kind of. Yeah, okay. like a black pupil, but around that was yellow, like right. a dull yellow color. Yep. And but the front from the shoulders front was black, pure black, and from there back it was the color of a hyena, and it was shaped like a hyena in that slope because its back legs was short and its front legs was real long. Okay. And it had three toes and one like mandible claw or dew claw or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, like the dew claw like a dog has, yeah. Yes, but it wasn't on on the road. It was like sticking up. Okay. And the claws, it had claws. I'd say the claws was probably an inch long. This thing probably weighed 600 pounds. That's how big that thing was. And it just sat there or stood there in the road and stared at me. And the noise of the truck and the air and stuff on that truck didn't even phase that thing. And I thought, if that thing wants me, it can rip this truck apart and get me. You know, because I had no weapon, no nothing. Right, right. But... And its ears was on, like, on the top of its head. And it had, like, a, I don't know, like a mane, like, kind of. Kind of like a, like a, like a lion's mane around its shoulders area, or? Yeah, kind of like that. And then it went down its back, like, in the center of its back. Okay. So far down. But it was, it looked shorter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it really kind of represented, it kind of really resembled a hyena yes the way the the way the hair and stuff is on a hyena is kind of like that yeah but the spots and stuff on the back part of it and everything looked just like a hyena and the shape like it sloped down like a hyena and when it run through the field how a hyena's got that weird run that's what it was doing like a kind of a together lope kind of yeah like a you know, like a gallop like thing, I don't know. Yeah. Kind of You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yep, yeah, I do, I do. Wow. But yeah, it it was massive. That thing was absolutely huge. Was there a tail? was could you see if there was a tail or what was it was just like a little short like tail. Like a stump kinda? Of? Uh kinda of like like a short tail of a dog you know what i'm saying okay not a stub but probably six eight inches long kind of like 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 what a whippet or something would have really small okay yeah something like that and it stood there and looked at me it seemed like forever which i don't think was too long you know because my heart was a pounding and i was just terrified yeah I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Well, why wouldn't you be, I, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm 53, and I've lived here my whole entire life. And I've been in all the woods around here, you know, and never seen anything like that. Yeah. I've seen all the other animals, but not not something like that. And it stood there and stared at me, and all of a sudden it kind of turned to the right and grabbed a full-grown deer that was laying there picked that thing up and took off and jumped the ditch and went up up a steep bank and turned to the right. And, you know, I watched it go. And when it got out of sight, I took off in my truck and I looked there thinking maybe somebody hit that deer or something like that with a car. Yeah. There wasn't no parts of a car there. There wasn't no blood, nothing. It was like, it knew that deer was there because it run right to where that deer was. It was weird. Mm-hmm. And so I went on down the road, probably a hundred yards. And it was like a little, little cove. And there was rocks on both sides of the cove. And I was going down through there and here come another one out that cove and across the road, went down over the hill. But it was, it was a lot smaller than that one, but it looked just like it. 
like size wise because like this big one 600 pounds if you could guess what would you say this one was i'd say 250 maybe three it was like half the size okay of the, the big one but if, if that big one would have stood up on its back legs, it would have been eight, nine feet tall. Because my truck's eight foot wide, and it was wider on all fours longer than my truck. Right. Front end. Wow. So you can just you can just imagine how big that thing was if it would have stood up, you know. Yeah, what, easily eight, nine feet at least. Yes. Because you yeah. said when that thing turned... This, really quick, just so everyone knows, this is the second time Mark and I are doing this upload because I had an issue with the uh, recording thing. So, with, yeah. <laughs> but when you said that thing turned sideways, it was at least eight feet long because your truck is about eight feet eight feet wide yeah. in the front. Right. Wow. I mean, that, yeah. that's huge. So, when it stood up, it would have been eight feet or, or taller. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I was like 10, 15 feet from it. It was right in front of me, right in front of me, right in the road. Jeez. And this was my second load. It was around 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and that field is a wide-open field. Like it wasn't, it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't trying to hide. It was coming through the field. Like, I, I, like you and I had said earlier, Almost like it knew its deer was there, and yeah. you posed a threat to its dinner, and it came to kind of square off with you and say, hey, this is mine. Get out yeah. of here. It got between me and the deer. That and is... it was just, teeth was showing, and it was staring straight at me. That is absolutely terrifying. So, terrifying. You know, and... People's got to be careful because if I would have hit that thing and got out of that truck, the other one probably would have got me. Yeah. Or maybe it would have, you know. I mean, of course, I probably wouldn't have the guts to get out of the truck, but right. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> right, right. And, then, like, I, you and I had talked before and after the first part that we did, um, yeah. and I had talked to you a little bit about the, the Delaware or the Connecticut encounter with yeah. the ambulance guy and these things are tactical so yeah i mean if you had hit it like you said you might not even hurt the big one but yeah. that second one easily could have taken you out i'm guessing just oh by... yeah yeah it's terrifying and the it was like wow. it was like it was standing up there waiting for the other one you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and like you said it was, it was up Dips up above, like like there's a little hill like there. Mm -hmm. But if it would have kept running, it would have done been gone. Right. So it had to stop when that one stopped. And was probably up there watching. Yep. Because so he was on the, off, the other one was on the opposite side of you, from. It, it was on down, okay. like a hundred yards down. Okay. Down the road, past the one that the big one. Yep. Yeah, when you said, because you had mentioned you had looked to see if there was any blood, it's almost like those things kind of pushed the deer to its death, you know, ran it to death. You, you that's, that's what I thought, because there, there was nothing there. Yeah. It's like the deer just run up there and just fell over. And they was running together. So, I mean, I thought they just run it to death. Yeah, that's geez, so. And the location of this area is is what's the the land like out there? Oh, it's it's nothing. It's forest. It's real thick. You know, it's anything could be in that area. Right. It's in Tucker County. So you've got. You've got forest. There's some cave systems out there, like you had said yeah. prior. Yeah. Um, Mountains everywhere. Deer population, because what you can't hunt out there, because it's what is it state land or? Yeah, you can't hunt out there. There's there's 
any given time you can look like in any field and see 30 or 40 deer in the field eating so there's plenty of deer and there's fresh water so this is a, a pretty yeah. good location for these things to i mean stay permanently it's almost like a permanent area for them yeah. why would they leave you know exactly i mean there's there's all kinds of springs and natural springs and it's just loaded with everything they would need wow yeah. i mean that's it's wow. terrifying to to even i can't imagine what you felt like and like you said you 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 didn't really know what dogman was i mean i'm no, sure you've heard, I of, never even heard of it yeah yeah <laughs> so and there's a camp there's a camp ground down below a very big one and, and some woman some woman that heard my story that that said she seen one that looked just like what i've seen but it looked like a baby one like a really small one run through her yard and she was outside and she couldn't figure out what it was and then she heard my story and she was like well that sounds exactly like what i've seen right wow so it's crazy yeah it definitely is it's really yeah but i mean it totally done me and i don't i mean i just bought a brand new camp and everything that's gonna go camp and i ain't going no <laughs> yeah not now definitely and it sucks like you said you can't have a firearm in your truck with you so i mean you're nah. pretty much you're pretty much at whatever happens happens you know if you had gotten in yeah. an accident you were you were screwed yeah. even if you didn't hit yeah. it and you got ditched you were definitely screwed oh yeah yeah wow. i mean it, it could come in that truck anytime it wanted to hmm. it's incredible so. it is incredible now your your wife had reached out to me, and yeah. she had did some research and took got some pictures, and there's a creature that she found that or a picture that she showed you of a creature called like a Andrew Sarkis, some kind yeah. of Mongolian canine like creature, and it that picture that you guys are seeing right now is going to be what Mark the closest thing to what Mark saw. That's the closest that I could see that okay. would fit what it was. I mean, that's just looking at the picture, and I I can't imagine what you felt. Huh. You know, I ain't never been so scared in my damn life. I tell you that. Yeah, yeah, it's and definitely... I'm I'm still jumpy. Like if I'm out somewhere, I, I just you know I'm always looking around because you don't know what's out there. I'm telling you. No. No, you really I don't. I lived here for 53 years, and uh, I've been down that road, like I said, three, two, three times a day, every day, through the same exact spot, and never seen a thing until that day. And and you haven't seen it after either. That's the that's the no. strangest part because, and like you said, during the first thing that we did, the woods are so deep. And so thick out there, there's spots oh. that human beings haven't been to. Yeah, there's so, places you couldn't even you couldn't even get. Yeah, it's so thick and, and stuff. So, so I mean, you, you may never see. This was probably a chance sighting. Yeah, of your life, you know, you you probably will never see this thing again. These two things again. Hopefully, you don't. Yeah, hopefully I don't. But, but I mean. Yeah, where you in, saw in a way, it. In a weird way, you kind of want to. Mm -hmm. but in another way, you don't want to. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I think once is enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, um, the area that you live in, um, with all the woods and stuff, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of Sasquatch and stuff like that. Yeah. But, I mean, this thing is like probably made a sasquatch would dwarf the or this thing would make a sasquatch probably look small if, if i'm yeah how i'm yeah. picturing you telling me it you know yeah it would that's incredibly it's it's terrifying i cannot you know i dang just to, yeah, was, i mean you're in yeah. the biggest land vehicle that's the thing is you're in yeah. the biggest land vehicle cars don't like being near tractor trailers and this right. thing just stops and says, 
this is my deer. What the yeah. heck are you doing? Get out of here. It was not scared one bit of that damn truck. I thought when the air went off, mm-hmm. it was scared. You know, no, it didn't. Yeah, because the air is like a big... Went. For those of you who don't know, when the the air brake goes off, it's like a big oh. release. It's just a huge sound. It's real loud. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't flinch that thing. It didn't even, it didn't do nothing. Hmm. That's... And you're talking a big truck that's loud. Yep. And it just stood there and stared at me. Like telling me, you know, this is mine, you ain't getting it kind of thing snarling at me yep. i was like mm. i thought well you know you you think you're gonna die even if you're in a big truck when you see something like that yeah yeah so, absolutely yeah because yeah. you i mean you don't have any clue of what that creature is thinking you know no no so wow well i appreciate you uh doing a second round and I'm, i apologize for oh, my for my equipment kind of messing up um it's is, pouring the snow anyway i'm not doing nothing yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely is there anything that you'd like to say to the to the audience before we end the interview just be careful and anytime you go in the woods make sure you've got a powerful weapon because I never in a million years thought I would ever see something like that. I've been in these woods my whole life. And if I would have known that was in the woods, I wouldn't have been in the woods. Yeah, absolutely. And I haven't been in the woods since either. Yep. So, I mean, oh yeah, you and never it, know when you might see something like that. Yeah, yeah. And everyone, this just, this is recent. This isn't years ago. This was yeah. last April, you know, yep. so... <laughs> It's less than a year ago, and this poor guy still has to travel that that road two times, four times a day, going in and going out. Yeah. Gosh. That's well, a lot of stress in that. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yep. Do me a favor. Don't hang up. I appreciate you coming on today. I appreciate you doing a second round and being a good sport about that. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. And, um... Be safe, and uh, hopefully you don't see anything out there again. But if you do, please keep me in the loop, because I'd like to know. Oh, I will. All right. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Wow. What an amazing an encounter. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm putting myself into Mark's shoes, and... Yeah, and I do that a lot when I when I talk to you guys. <clears throat> but I, I could never imagine, you know, there you are. You're in an area that you've grown up in all your life. And you stumble upon one of these things. You're in a tractor trailer. That's That's the craziest part about it is that this thing leveled up with a tractor trailer. Like, hey, what's up? this is my deer. (laughs) I want my deer. And, you know, like he said, and like we talked about after those woods around where he was are so deep that you may never see one of these things again. He may never, ever have the opportunity to see one of these things again. I mean, it's been a year almost. He drives that to and fro daily, four times he's on that road, back and forth. And he hasn't seen one again. But that chance encounter has really changed him, his and his wife's life. They don't want to go camping anymore. You know, they, they'd rather not be outside. And that, that really stinks because the outside is a great thing. I mean, you guys should enjoy it. But do we really want to knowing these things are out there? Especially in the Virginia, West Virginia area. With all of these bodies coming up. You know, obviously we know the lies are out there. The media, the local, federal, state governments are lying. You still, I still haven't heard about anything on the second body that was found with Richard Timothy Honaker. I had the deputy 
on that phone call that I recorded admit to me that there were two bodies found? I said, well, in my head, I figured I'll hear about the second body in a couple days. Still nothing. So there's obviously a real cover-up going on. Now, here's something that I want you guys to think about. These hyena-looking-like-dogmen, Mark is not the first person I heard about this in West Virginia. Just last night, Christine Ann talked about a hyena-like dog man. What the heck is going on, guys? It's, it's terrifying. It's not right. And I really think at this point, the government, whether it be local, state, or federal, steps in, says, hey, we got to let the public know. We have to. Because there's too many bodies popping up. There's too many people disappearing. There's just too much unexplained things happening. <clears throat> and they're smart. These things are smart. Uh, Mark and his wife have only been with the channel for a couple of months now. But they've listened to a lot of the encounters. I shared with Mark the Delaware encounter. Or the Connecticut encounter, excuse me. Where the paramedic, you know, that, that was tactical. That was a tactical setup. And they know what they're doing before we do. Look at Dr. Nancy Shaw. I think that was a tactical setup. She opens her door to check on some. We don't even know what happened, actually, and I'm not even going to make an assumption on what happened. All we do know is that her car was found on the side of the road with the pass or the driver's side door open, and she's in a ditch in the other side of the road, dead. That that just doesn't make sense to me. But what that tells me is that was a tactical attack on her. Um, there's just too many unexplained things going on that we cannot overlook anymore we have to look at these things head on and we have to really really be aware of what's out there our surroundings we have to keep ourselves safe we have to keep our family safe because the local state and federal aren't going to keep us safe because they don't care about us they don't care about us we are sheep to them they are sheep, but they don't feel like they are sheep because they are men in power, but they are still sheep compared to these things. So, I don't know. Anyway, I guess that's my little rant for that. Um, maybe I'll throw in an encounter. Let's throw in an encounter. How about that? Back in high school, my friends and I would go ghost hunting live in Lincoln, Nebraska, on weekends by driving for miles outside of city limits until the roads turned into minimum maintenance roads. On one such journey in my mom's Ford Explorer, we had a car break down on us in the middle of nowhere miles from the city limits. As soon as we got out of the cars, we all noticed how the cows on either side of the fences were mooing and walking closer and closer to us. We figured they were hungry. This was around 2005, so cell phone reception was not the best outside of city limits where we were. We had finally gotten a hold of one of our friends to come and get us, and also arranged for a tow truck to get the car. Unbeknownst to our friend, we first contacted, thanks to crummy reception and roaming cell phones, my mom came out and picked us all up. By the time she had gotten us, the cows were on either side of the fence circling us, only divided by the road we were on. Meanwhile, our friend was driving out to our location, again not knowing we had been picked up, when she spotted something dark, large, and running very fast out in the fields, Nebraska, so lots of flatland, which made her very uncomfortable. She noticed this figure getting closer as she got to our location and decided to turn around and go back home getting spooked. As she was driving back, going around 55 miles an hour, a large black figure jumped from the ditch on the side of the road 
hit the side of the car, got up and jumped the fence and ran away. She said it had a black tail, teeth like a wolf. It left tufts of hair on her car door. I don't know if she ever sent it anywhere to be tested, but I saw the hair. What really freaked me out as well was that I had another friend who didn't know any of this had happened tell me a story of a very similar figure they saw run out of the fields a few weeks prior. She said they could see it running, keeping up with their car. Then I can't remember the order, but I believe it was this went from running on two legs to four and just sped off in front of them. Well, it was to their side of the side out to the field. I've always wondered what it was and have never been able to get a good explanation. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this night ending bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. Your support is honestly what continues this channel to grow and go and what makes it a place for people to want to share their experiences, theories, and ideas with zero ridicule, zero judgment, just simply being treated with the respect we all deserve. That is on you guys, the community you have created in the comment section and outside of uh, the comment section, emailing and such. You guys are a very welcoming group and, and it's amazing. It really is because this community is something special and it's all because of you. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. We know these creatures are real, and we know they are out there. Share that information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, and never stop searching for the truth. God bless you all.